In this quick video, I'm going to show you how I've been putting together aerial panoramas with pictures that I've been taking with my quadcopter, primarily using uh, autopilot. Um, I am not endorsing Autopano Giga by any means, but it's the product that I found that works pretty well and pretty easily. I'm also going to quickly show how I've uh, how I stitched together a horizontal pano like this that uh, was actually a mixture of four pictures taken at the same time as well. For information on how to take pictures using autopilot for these aerial panoramas, check out the pano mode video that was just released um, for Autoflight Logic. So this video is intended to be down and dirty and very, very quick. I'm assuming that you have Auto Panagiga and you have a folder with the images that you've pulled from your quadcopter, most likely using uh, Autopilot. And all I'm going to do here is after starting up Auto Panagiga, I'm going to drag all the pictures. In this case, I've got 41 pictures, I believe. Um, but it will work relatively well with 20 or 27. I've experimented with as little as 10 pictures and created a pretty darn good looking uh, aerial panorama. But drag them all into the upper left hand corner of Auto Panagiga. At this point, press on the little play button in the lower left hand corner, which will process your pictures and create a rough view of your panorama on the right hand side. The next thing I like to do is to fix the horizon, which may have got a little off kilter due to the pictures being taken in the wind. So click on Edit. And then there is this Fix Horizon icon in the center of uh, Auto Panagiga's user interface. This will straighten the horizon and give you a better looking panorama. The next thing I do, and again in this edit mode, is to click on the Crop button. And then I do Auto, which will automatically crop out the parts of the panorama that were fuzzy or uh, not in a perfect rectangle. Um, one thing I'm not going to do in this video is show you how to add sky in Photoshop. That makes for a longer video and I'm trying to get this out quickly. So there are other videos out there that show you how to do that if you're interested in going that step. Click on the checkbox and then go back to your original user interface. Now at this point I'm going to click on this gear in the upper center and I'm actually going to render my panorama. I like to switch it from the HDR default to JPEG, but you could use TIFF or even some of the other options depending upon where you're hosting it. I've had relatively good success with both JPEG and TIFF. You can now click on Render in the lower right hand corner and AutoPano will go forward and create your panorama for you. I'm going to speed this up because this can take a while. At this point, your panorama should be created and you should be able to find it on your computer. And now you can find a good place to host it. There are plenty of places to host these 360 and the 180 panos. I've had the greatest success with Facebook and Google Photos as well as Skypixel, but there are many other places where you can uh, post these documents so people can view them. As an example, if you go into Google Photos, you can quickly upload a document stick it into an album, and then you can see here, just by clicking on an uploaded uh, panorama, it pops right up and you can navigate around uh, really easily. I'm gonna show one more example of how I created that horizontal pano, again, with the four shots I created with Autopilot. To see how I created those four pictures, again, watch the Autopilot how-to video. Um, but again, the process is actually very, very sim uh, similar. I'm going to take the four pictures, I'm going to drag them into uh, Auto Panagiga, and then I'm going to click on the button in the lower left hand corner, which will render the, uh, the panorama on the right hand side. I'm going to straighten the horizon, I'm going to crop the image, and then I'm going to render it. Exactly the same process, but in this case, it's going to spit out the horizontal pano instead of the 360 degree pano. I've now cropped it, I'm going to click on the check mark and the center of the screen, go back to the other user interface, click on the gear, and again I'm going to switch it to JPEG and click on render. And that's it. Depending upon where on your computer that you had that 
panorama rendered that you can go there and look at it and again you'll have that 180 degree panorama that I had shot. Again I've used uh, Panaweaver, I've used PT GUI with uh, similar success I just like Auto Panagiga so this is the one that I'm using in my workflow right now. I hope you found this quick video useful. Uh, good luck and have fun shooting.